Oh hi hi guys um yeah this is an, this is another video same time and um, in this one I'm gonna talk about service serving God what is serving God well many of you out there have experienced some kind of persecution in the places you gather uh, sometimes by leaders sometimes by fellow Christians. And you know a lot a lot has happened to all of us out there. But to me, this is what happened to me. I become a Christian, I come to church, I come to church, and um of course every church I went to they kept kept on asking me, Where is your home church? Do you have a home church? I was like, No, I do not have a home church. And they were like, You are lost need to have a home church and they would ask me hey what about a spiritual father do you have a spiritual father I was like no I do not have a spiritual father and they were like you need to have someone to account you know to be accountable to I was like I do have that is Christ and they'll look at me like hmm. no you need a human being I was like human being really I was like I have Christ you know and the Holy Spirit I'm accountable to them and people always looked at me strange. You know. This is sad. Uh, for the most part, churches I went to, people always used to say that you have to be part of the church body. You have to do some kind of service. Join the choir. Uh, join, uh, you know, sound. Or, you know, sound or lighting. What's your gift? What do you do? This and that. A lot of things that were asked, I'm telling you. I'm like, maybe you can be an usher, clean the church, sweep, uh, do all this kind of stuff. And um, one time, yep, I receive the understanding that doing all those things, you do not serve God. Yes. And I'm not here to offend anyone before anyone complains about this video. I know I know YouTube will not put it down but and um people will be like there is um so many churches I'll give you an example if you start a church start preaching to people and you get ushers you get people to clean the church to do that they're not doing that work for god they're doing that work for that church let me let me explain it in a simple and plain way you clean where you live right when you get up in the in the house and you clean up your house you clean up your table you clean up everything you wash your clothes Are you serving God? No. You're keeping personal hygiene you know, and sanitation in the home. You're keeping your house of a board clean. You do some general cleaning, you wash your clothes, because you want to wear nice, nice and clean clothes, right? Does that mean you're serving God? No. This whole thing of serving in church it's an addition to the temple, to the church itself, to the building. It is not ministry. Now, so many people think when you do that, you're serving God. You will be shocked when you die. And God tells you, I do not know you. Well, someone told me, they gave me uh, an example. They were like, no. Ushering is, an, is serving God because if someone comes to church and they are sad and I smile at them like I make their day and they are blessed. Now how is that smile going to teach me the word of God? How is it going to rebuke me? How is it going to edify me? That is not serving God. The acts of service are these. Visiting the sick Feeding the poor. 
helping the helpless. Widows, orphans, the hungry, visiting prisons, the forgotten, preaching the word of God, encouraging people, doing anything you can, clothing the poor. That is serving God. That is serving God. But you playing the piano in church or the guitar or singing to your best voice, that is not serving God. Do not be deceived. Praying for other people, standing in for them, seeking God on behalf of other people, that is serving God. Not only that, you pray for them, you seek, you seek God for them, you encourage them, you visit them. How many believers do that? For the most part, you find most of us believers going about our hobbies in our free time. We can't wait to go for holiday. But did you know that you could go for holiday and minister during holiday? That would be amazing. But I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm just here to clear the air. That people think certain things are service and they are not. They are being deceived. Now, so many, some church leaders use this to guilt trip people into service because they need people to do the cleaning, people to carry stuff around. But let me tell you something. If you're in a church, it is common sense for you to contribute that if you're in a church where they uh, they collect the chairs and put them in the storage, it is common sense for you to get up after, your serv after service and help collect or gather the chairs into storage. That is common sense. It is common sense for you to go and tell your pastor, hey, uh, I can help vacuum, I can help mop, I can help clean, I can do this and that. It is common sense. Anyone should do that. It is common sense for you to contribute in the church choir if you believe you can sing. It is common sense for you <laughs> to go and play that guitar on a Wednesday service or Sunday or whichever day and that keyboard. It is common sense because if you have the skill, apply it. You know, but don't think that that, that, that skill, skill is God given. It's for you to serve God for all your life. God didn't call you to just play music. God didn't call you to go and play around with church lights, you know, the church lights. Church, some churches have lights that you can dim them, you can play around with them, change the colors. And that's ministry, you're ministering. Ministering is calling souls to God. So if what you do, you believe you're doing for God, well, there are gifts that are hidden in in some of these things, like playing music, you know, like playing instruments, like King Saul had, um, uh, had a demon and King David used to play the harp and he would, if it would fall off, you know, he would get delivered. And I happened to meet someone who had the same gift. When he plays, people get healed, you know, but not everyone that does that, it's, you know, it is a common gift. I mean, it is common sense that you can serve God and you'll be a blessing to others. But don't look at such things alone and say that, hey, because I'm an usher in church and every Sunday I serve God, I teach in Sunday school, I'm serving God. And you only teach Sunday school on Sundays. You don't even follow up those kids. Um, over the week, you know, during the week to know how they do. You do, you do not check on the parents. 
you just meet the kids on Sunday. They know you as their Sunday school teacher. They don't, they don't know you as anything else. You probably don't even pray for them. Because if you decide to be in children's ministry, then you should check on the parents. You should do rounds, you know, during the week to check on these people. You're like, hey, how is so-and-so? Yeah, you, you get reports from parents that, hey, oh, me, our child is maybe sick this week. Then you pray for the child. You go visit the child in hospital as a group with other kids. You cheer up the child. Um, they all come, they pray, the child gets healed. I mean, that's ministry. But how many churches do that? That even the kids don't know each other, they just meet at church. The they, kids can't wait to meet at church on Sunday to do some painting, to play around. Well, whatever you call service, as long as you bear fruits for God, as long as you bear fruits for God and edify people and bring people to the kingdom, then you're serving. But if you're not doing that, So, let me talk about um, Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter 5. And um, I'm going to read out some of the fruits of the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit and some of the fruits that come out of you. Because these will help you, will be some kind of guide uh, unto um, service. You know, because these are things that you bear. And these are things that you project that fall off of you to others. Mm. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love you will have love and you give out that love how do you express your love helping feeding guiding serving others joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law and they that are christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another envying one another so we're supposed to be one with others, carry their burdens, have compassion, be moved to their situations, that some so-and-so household doesn't have food, let's stand in for them. You know, but you find some churches, people don't even know each other. They don't even care. They meet on Sunday, they smile, hee hee hee. They meet on the streets, they don't even say hi. But that's the church, that's a church member. You, you go to the same church and pray. Let me tell you something. Serving God is you sharing or projecting the gifts of the Holy Spirit unto other people. If you feel when you usher to people, when, you, when you're an usher, you're projecting the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you mop the church, you're projecting all these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Then you're serving. But I'll tell you the truth. The church as a building is a building. It is common sense to do most of the things that people are doing in those buildings. The members of the church should do that work. That is a place you sit, you ought to clean it. You ought to, to serve, I mean, to serve the group, you know. You make groups amongst yourselves, you select a few people. In the, in the congregation, and you're like, hey, these are the people that will do this this Sunday or this Wednesday. But some people have decided to get that as a permanent job. They even have a payroll. Some are not even on a payroll in some churches, but they got that position and they are content that they are serving God. You will be deceived. You're mistaken. God bless you.